All right, so my name is Amanda Manning. I am a senior academic advisor in the College of Pharmacy at Purdue University. Um, I'm, we are really excited to have you here. I am joined by three College of Pharmacy ambassadors, so current students in the College of Pharmacy. I'm going to have them introduce themselves. If you all would, tell us your name, your year in school, your hometown, why you chose pharmacy, and why you chose Purdue. And if you forget that list of questions, let me know and I can give you a little reminder. Um, the order you are in on my screen is Tyler, Aubrey, Kayla. So if we want to go in that order, I think that would kind of help. So Tyler, if you'd go ahead and lead us off. My name is Tyler Lingrich. I'm a second year professional pharmacy student. And it was at hometown. So I'm originally from Fort Wayne. Um, I actually did my undergrad in Fort Wayne as well. So I didn't do it at Purdue. Um, so I can give that perspective. Um, it's a little bit different than the pre-pharmacy perspective. And then the reason I chose Purdue, I had some connections to Purdue. My wife's uh, father actually went here and graduated here. So he was a big push for Purdue. And there's a lot of pride um, on that side of his family of coming to Purdue. And then uh, I'm from Indiana originally. And this is the school to go to if you're from Indiana. Um, obviously, for a lot of reasons, it's very prestigious in the top 10. Um, and it's very nice for cost as well if you're from uh, Indiana. So that's a big factor for a lot of people um, and proximity to family as well. And then I chose pharmacy, a bit of a different route then since I didn't originally, I wasn't pre-pharmacy. So what kind of drove me to pharmacy was the way that you can make an impact on patients uh, of all different demographics without needing to do complex medical interventions. So being able to use a medication to help a patient, I think is really amazing. And a lot of them are a lot more affordable than doing a really complex surgery. So it's a really nice way to be able to make a big impact on a lot of different people in the world. Hi, everyone. My name is Aubrey Berlowski. Um, I am a first year pre-pharmacy student, otherwise a freshman. Um, I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and I chose Purdue because I knew I wanted to go to a school that had a pharmacy school. Um, so then I started looking around the Midwest, kind of figuring out, I knew I didn't want to go too far. Um, and I just fell in love with Purdue. I had parents or friends, parents who really liked it and kept telling me about it. My tour was amazing. I just loved how small the school was and you get to kind of really know your professors and stuff. So that really pushed me towards Purdue. Um, and then I chose pharmacy because I spent a lot of time in pharmacies as a kid. Um, I had a community member who was a pharmacist who was really, really cool. He always brought his dog into his pharmacy. Um, and I think that really kind of gave me inspiration to look more into pharmacy. And then I just fell in love with it. And I love the science aspect of it and getting to help people and work with other medical doctors, but not have to do the full eight to 12 years of schooling. Hi, everyone. I'm Kayla Timbing, and I'm from Denver, Colorado. I am a first year professional student um, in the College of Pharmacy. Um, I chose Purdue because, well, like Aubrey was saying, I was also looking very strictly into schools that had a pharmacy school when I was applying to college as a freshman. Um, and I really appreciated how structured Purdue's curriculum was. I didn't have any questions as to what I was supposed to take, what would transfer, what, like, what like courses I were available to me. So I really appreciated like the clarity in that. And I chose pharmacy because I liked how diverse the pharmacy, like the pharmaceutical degree can get you. I'm sure we'll talk about this later on in the presentation, but um, there is a lot more to pharmacy than just the person in the white coat behind the counter or the person in the white coat in the hospital. So I appreciated learning a lot more about that. All right, thank you all. We really appreciate that. To our guests, if you all have any questions throughout um, our time together, if you wanna throw them in the chat, if you wanna unmute yourself, anything goes here. We are here to make sure that your questions get answered. I definitely have a PowerPoint if there aren't questions that we can go through and just kind of give an overview of what you can expect. But my goal today is to make sure that all of your questions get answered. So anything you might have, feel free, free to throw it our way. Um, I've got the advising side. We've got the three ambassadors who are covering both our pre-pharmacy and our PharmD side. 
Um, any questions about our BSPS program that we'll talk about, I can answer those. So we're happy to make sure that all of that gets answered. I am going to start by sharing my screen so you can see the lovely PowerPoint. All right. So um, like I said, my name is Amanda Manning. My email is up there on the screen, manninad at purdue.edu, and I am a senior academic advisor. I've been with the College of Pharmacy for just over two years now. Um, and I have been loving it. Our students are very high achieving. They really strive to do their best. And my colleagues in the College of Pharmacy are just phenomenal. Um, there are not many places where I would tell you that I would trust any of my advisees to go to any of my colleagues, but in the College of Pharmacy, I am very comfortable with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at some stuff. So some things that make Purdue special is that we have two degree paths. So we have our four year Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences. We call it the BSPS because Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences is quite a mouthful. That degree tends to be for people who are interested in drug research, drug development, drug discovery. Maybe you wanna go into pharmaceutical sales or medical writing. Maybe you want to use it as a stepping stone to medical school or dental school or something along those lines. It's a really unique path that you can take so that you are more specialized on the drug side of things um, than some other pre-med majors maybe. We also have our PharmD route. So you start in pre-pharmacy like our Aubrey is doing now. In that, you are getting prepared for the PharmD program which allows you to become a licensed pharmacist. Maybe you wanna work in community pharmacy or hospital pharmacy or ambulatory care. There are a lot of different paths you can take with that. Um, so I'm gonna open this up to my ambassadors really quick. As of right now, knowing it can change, what type of pharmacy are you considering um, pursuing and why? So right now I'm interested in doing critical care pharmacy, which could either be in the emergency department, it could be in uh, the ICU, so the critical care units in the hospitals, um, or maybe even cardiology. So I'm really interested in doing a very clinical hospital side of pharmacy that involves a lot of specialization. Um, and the reason I chose that is because I worked in the ER for two years when COVID first started. And so I really got a very large dose of what that can be and what that means. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed my time um, with working with the, the different staff in the ER and what the pharmacist role was, which was very unique. I felt like, cause I didn't really know much about pharmacy then. Um, I hadn't, like I said, I didn't, I didn't do pre-pharmacy. So I made my decision based on the experiences I had in the hospital. And after seeing what the pharmacist did, which was a lot of directly saving lives in critical situations, uh, making a lot of calls about what medications um, patients would use. So they were having a really big impact on the outcomes of patients. Uh, that's what really drove me to decide on that area of pharmacy. So for me, I'm actually interested in basically the same thing, um, either ER, or critical care, intensive care, something very fast paced. Um, and I think that's why I'm really interested in it is I want every day to be a little bit different. Um, I want to see very intense situations kind of help when people really need it the most um, and just kind of walk in not knowing what that day is going to bring uh, and come out of there feeling better about how I went in. For me, I'm really interested in the nuclear pharmacy side of things. Uh, if you don't know what nuclear pharmacy is, it's like the... Um, manipulating radiopharmaceuticals for like chemotherapy or stuff like that. Um, I just took the first like introductory class um, just this semester. I'm still in it. So I'm taking the lab class next semester, but it's something that I'm really interested in. It's not something I really understood uh, when I was applying to college or let alone when I was in my pre-pharmacy year. So um, that's something that I definitely am starting to explore a little bit more. Wonderful. Um, so as you may have been picking up the um, PharmD path, we have the pre-pharmacy followed by PharmD. And that's another highlight of Purdue's College of Pharmacy is we have a two plus four PharmD program. So ours is set up to where you do two years of pre-pharmacy followed by four years of pharmacy school. 
So in six years, you are walking out as a doctor of pharmacy, that which is incredible. Six years in and out. And um, we do have a very strong program. Like Kayla mentioned, we do have a certificate in nuclear pharmacy, which makes us very unique. We have the oldest nuclear pharmacy program in the nation. Um, it was Nuclear pharmacy was born at Purdue. We have the best of the best when it comes to faculty members. Um, Dr. Kara Weatherman literally wrote the book on nuclear pharmacy. She is not just nationally renowned, but internationally renowned. When it comes to nuclear pharmacy, she is top dog. Um, and what's cool about our nuclear pharmacy program is it doesn't add any more time to your stay at Purdue. Um, throughout your time, you will have to take electives in the PharmD program. And if you just elect to take the nuclear pharmacy path, that can fill those electives and you're still walking out in the same amount of time. One of my students came in when they were a freshman and they said, I just really want to play with radioactive goo. And I said, I'm not sure you're entirely understanding what nuclear pharmacy is, but if you want to try out the first class and see what it's about, learn more about it, more power to you. Um, they work some really wonky hours in nuclear pharmacy. So if you tend to be a night owl, that could really work well for you. Um, we also have an academic retail pharmacy. So the Purdue University Pharmacy is located in the pharmacy building on campus. So students in their first year of um, professional pharmacy school will go and work in this pharmacy. Don't worry, they are supervised by older students and by pharmacists but faculty, staff, and students, and even community members can use this as their pharmacy. I personally do use it. So I have gone and picked up a prescription from one of my students before. Um, really nice because they already know your name, but you know. Um, Tyler and Kayla, if you could give us a little insight onto your experience with um, working in the pharmacy and what that was like for you, that'd be great. So coming into pharmacy school, I was a little bit nervous because although I'd worked in the ER, I'd never worked in retail before. So I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't, a lot of my other fellow students, it seemed like they at least had some experience in it. So I didn't know what that meant for me and how that was going to translate to pharmacy school. But what I realized was after I took the class, because it's, it's a class that you do in your first year um, that put you in the retail setting is you're with a professor that walks you through how to do everything there. And then you have other students there that are there to help you along the way, as well as other students in your class that are there as well at the same time. So it's a really low stakes environment because you have so many people there to help you and support you. So all the nerves that I had were gone because it was just, he said, you know, go at your own pace. If it's somebody that's been in retail for five years, they could go a lot faster and learn a little bit more about retail. But if it's someone like me that didn't necessarily have a lot of experience working at, let's say, a Walgreens or a CVS, they really walk you through the steps that you would have at uh, Walgreens or CVS. So then I saw that apply because then I worked at a CVS. And again, it was very similar. It translated really well between what we do there. Obviously, the systems are a little bit different. But in terms of the pace, it's a really nice pace to get you started into this is what it looks like to work in this type of environment. And as a student, this is how we're going to help support you. So they would always be over your shoulder, um, helping you with the questions that you'd have on here's how you do this process, this is how you do this process. So it's a really nice way to get an introduction to what that looks like. In my experience, I had worked at a community pharmacy like over the summers back home uh, before I got into pharmacy school, but I felt infinitely more confident in my drug knowledge and my ability to work in a pharmacy after taking the pup lab. Um, I like you, you have a recitation every week and then you get like a drug list. This is what you're supposed to know, dosing, indication, counseling tips, stuff like that. And then you have a quiz every week, um, which builds off of the previous quizzes, which keeps you like accountable for learning all the, the drug names. But now that I have my community rotation coming up this summer, I feel so much better about the, the drugs that I do know, especially the top 100 drugs. Uh, that are most common and found in most pharmacies. So um, yeah, and we work in smaller groups. When you're in the pharmacy, you can't really have a pharmacy full of 45 students. So I got really close with the people in my group and I was really thankful that we had that experience together. Kayla hit on a few things that I'd like to kind of touch on. Um, 
like she said, during the time when you are working in the pharmacy, you are learning the top 100 drugs. So you are really getting familiar with those common ones. She also talked about counseling, and this is what has set my experience of using Purdue pharmacies so far apart from every pharmacy I've used in the past. So when I go to pick up a prescription, um, I'm used to CVS or Walgreens or Walmart where you walk up, you give them your name, they hand you a bag that's stapled shut, and they ask, do you have any questions? And you say no, because no one ever has questions. That's not how Purdue University Pharmacy is. You walk in, you give your name, they'll go and grab your prescriptions, they'll take them out, they will open the bottle, pour a pill out, and show it to you. Is this what you're expecting? Do you know what it's called? Do you know what it treats? Do you know why you're taking it? Do you know what the side effects are? They are really making sure you understand why you're taking your medication. And I have never felt so confident about what drugs I've been taking in my life. It is um, a really unique experience. And to know that our first year professional students know enough information to make sure that I am confident just makes me feel so much better. And it it's a really unique experience. And I think it's phenomenal. Um, Purdue's College of Pharmacy is consistently ranked in the top 10. We are um, currently tied for number seven, but in the top 10, we're usually there somewhere. And we are an R1 research institution. So our students can get involved in research as early as their freshman year. Um, a story that I like to tell is one of my current sophomores, um, when he was coming in for his freshman year, he had signed up for Boiler Gold Rush, which is our orientation program. I cannot recommend it highly enough. The College of Pharmacy actually puts on a little pharmacy fair where you get to know other people in the College of Pharmacy and um, some faculty and staff. Well, the student of mine had gone into the building to go use the restroom or something. And he was talking to a friend and he was mentioning, hey, I'm interested in research. He said it at the right place at the right time because standing behind him was our Associate Dean of Research, Dr. Val Watts, who said, oh, you're interested in research. Here is my um, contact information. Let me know what you're interested in and we will find you a research project. So this student had research lined up before he started his freshman year and is now still working on the same project two years later, which is amazing. So I am really happy for him and research is really big at Purdue, um, mostly for our BSPS students, but PharmD students can do it as well. Um, of my ambassadors, have any of you done any research in your time at Purdue? Um, I'm currently in a research lab for um, food insecurity for breast cancer patients. My role is more um, online where I'm doing more like paperwork stuff, like getting the project off on its feet. Um, I'm also involved, well, I will be involved um, in a research project next semester, uh, which partners uh, Purdue with this company, Dialysis Clinic Incorporated. So I'll have more hands-on experience with that realm. But in my experience, I really loved my research lab. Um, I got really close with the coordinator. She really helps me um, understand the workings of um, how to get a research project off, off on their feet, which helps me get my next research project on its feet, so. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, one other thing that sets us apart from some other pharmacy schools is we merge the clinical and basic science teaching kind of all together into a semester. So some universities or pharmacy programs will do the book learning one semester and then do the application of it in a different semester. We really try to put that all together so that you're applying what you're learning in the classroom at the same time as you are um, learning it. So Tyler and or Kayla, would either of you like to speak on your experience of maybe, for example, how asthma, you learn about it in the classroom and then you learn how to talk to patients about it? So just to start it off too, I think an important thing to mention is that a lot of the topics that we learn in the class we call therapeutics, which is where we learn about all these different disease states like asthma or diabetes, we also take a lab and in that lab, we get to take that information we learned in class and apply it. So in this case, 
they brought all of these inhalers in that we learned about in class and they let us like mess with them and play with them and, and also uh, practice counseling to patients on here's how, like, and they gave us a checklist. Here's how you counsel somebody on how to use all of these different inhalers. And I think that was a really valuable experience is being able to uh, actually see the information on a slide in class, see the thing before you actually counsel a real patient on it. And then when I was working at CVS, I've had multiple times where I'm going to grab that same inhaler off the shelf and I have the patient say, I've never used this before. Can you help me out? And even though, you know, I'm, I'm I was a first year student then. And uh, I was like, yeah, absolutely. I can help you out with this. I just learned about this and here's how to do it. And I was really confident with that because I'd done it. I'd seen it. I've done it in lab and now I'm doing it in the real world. Um, so I think that was a really cool connection that you really see um, whenever you finally are starting to see, wow, you know, I've only learned a couple of disease states so far in my first year, but I'm already using this information somehow. So when that, that clicks, it's such a good feeling because now you're really making an impact on a lot of different people's lives. Uh, even though you came in, it could have been three months ago and you didn't really know how to do any of that. I just had my asthma lab on Monday. So this is all really fresh for me. Um, but I think what's really important about the lab aspect is that even though it is a class and you're getting graded, they will give you very constructive like feedback on what you can improve on. Like for me personally, like I, I went into the room, I like, I sped through my entire counseling and I was like, okay, what questions do you have? That kind of thing. And afterwards they were like, you know, this is more of a conversation. Like you should really take your time. You can take a breath. You don't have to like run through everything and then like try to cover all bases. This is very patient centered. So uh, for your next one, this is what you should do better. So it was very, I was very comfortable. I'm never super scared that I'm going to do like, if I do bad, I'd rather do bad in the lab than do it, do bad outside. So they're very um, supportive in that. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, as you heard, we are also quite affordable. We are the most affordable of the top 10 pharmacy schools. And just to do a little bit of comparison, these numbers are a little bit old. They were pulled November 9th of 2019 from these different programs' websites. But as you can see, both for resident and non-resident, Purdue is a little bit friendlier on the wallet. So this is a program that you may want to consider if cost is something that you're considering, which I know it was when I was in college. One other thing that we're really excited about is we're getting a new building. So the nursing and pharmacy education building, we broke ground already and we are um, hoping to have that open in about two and a half years. If you're familiar with campus, it is on the corner of Mitch Daniels Boulevard, also known as State Street and Russell Street. It's across from Farmhouse Fraternity. This is kind of what we're looking at. The top picture is what the building is hopefully going to look like from the outside. And then you have a few looks on the inside. You will notice this is nursing and pharmacy. We thought it'd be a good idea to put the two together for the clinical aspect of things. So putting us together kind of made sense, but we will still have like pharmacy advising is gonna be over here. Nursing advising is gonna be over here. So we can collaborate when needed but we can also have our space when needed. So that's really exciting. If you do join us, um, we're hoping to have this in place right around your third year on campus. So um, a typical first semester, it is very going, it's going to vary so much between students, but a typical first semester, you're looking at our intro chemistry course, which we call Chem 129. Math 16010, that is our Calculus 1 course. Biology 110 is our intro biology course. We have PHSC 100. This would have been called Farm 100 when Aubrey and Kayla took it. It's a course that is exposing you to what is pharmacy? What can you do with a pharmacy degree? How do you write a resume? How do you make an elevator pitch? So there's a lot of options there um, that you'll learn about in that class. We also try to put you into an oral communication, a written communication, or an economics course, just to kind of round things out and make it maybe a smidge less STEM heavy. But as you can imagine, AP, IB, dual credit could definitely switch things up. 
So um, there have been a couple questions come through the chat. I want to make sure everyone gets the answers to those. So kind of talking about AP credits, in general, we tell you bring in all of the AP credit you can. If you have calculus credit, do it. If you have biology credit, use it. If you have economics credit, use it. The only time I'm going to hesitate is with chemistry. So technically, if you get a four or a five, you get credit for two courses, which is Chem 115 and 116. And those credits can replace our Chem 129 course. However, I really would want you to consider taking our Chem 129 course. I've been told by a number of students that Chem 129 is a lot like AP Chemistry, but more in depth. So while AP Chemistry is great, this just helps prepare you for the college level. And hey, if you get an A out of it, that's five credits of A on your transcript, which never hurts anyone. Um, but for every other AP credit, we are definitely going to see what we can do with it. There was a question regarding um, economics. If you get a four or a five on either macro or microeconomics, we will take credit for that. Or if you get a three on both micro and macro, we will take credit for that as far as econ goes. Um, if I could ask my ambassadors, maybe not Tyler because you came in during the professional program. So Aubrey and Kayla, um, when you came in, did you use any AP IB dual credit? Did you opt to take classes instead? How did you go ahead and navigate that? Yeah, so for me, um, coming in, I did have some AP credit. So I had my written communications class uh, credit, and I also had a statistics class, which I believe is still a requirement. Yeah, so I had that one, um, gotten those knocked out. I also did have chemistry. I did take AP chemistry, so I did have that credit, and I could have opted out of taking 129. Um, however, my advisor gave the same advice. She said, take 129. Like, it will be very helpful, and so I did take it, and I would say like you said, it is very close to AP chemistry, except a lot more in depth. And that class was probably the one class that I felt like this is a real college class. This is what's really preparing me. Um, I came into my spring semester now feeling so much better and prepared, but I don't know if I would have had all the foundational knowledge I needed if I didn't take 129. Um, so from a personal recommendation, I would also say take 129, even if you have that credit, um, because it is very beneficial. I got my physics credit taken care of. I took a dual enrollment class in high school, so I got that done. I got my written communications taken care of, and I had credit um, like Aubrey for Chem 129, but I ended up taking it. I think the biggest benefit for me taking it was, well, one, I wasn't super confident in my knowledge and my ability to use my chemistry knowledge going forward into my curriculum. So that it definitely boosted um, my confidence and my GPA, which I, I'm not complaining about. Um, but um, the 129 class really taught me how I study best. I feel like a lot of times in high school, especially a lot of pharmacy students were very, what I've noticed is we're very naturally good like science studiers in high school uh, but for me coming into college was a really big shock so I learned how I study best and I was able to carry those study skills forward in my education. Absolutely um, I love the backup Aubrey thanks um, so yeah if you have like the best chemistry teacher in the world and you get a five on AP Chem and you talk to your advisor about it, we will let you use your credit. There's no question there. It's just, we will strongly recommend you take Chem 129 just to make sure you're prepared. As far as physics goes, the required physics course we ask for is Physics 220, but there are a few different ways to get credit for that, either dual credit, or for APs, we normally require a five for physics credit, but this is something you can talk about with your advisor. Um, if you would like to email me as well, we can look at your specific case and we can um, try to get that figured out. But if you can get physics out of the way, that would be awesome. We'd love to see it. So PharmD admissions um, brings up a lot of questions usually. So like I said, we are a two plus four program. So two years of pre-pharmacy followed by four years of pharmacy school. 
So for the PharmD program itself, there is an application process. So you apply in the first semester of your sophomore year, and you're going to apply through FarmCast. And it's just an online um, system where you can put in all your information. It's sort of similar to, um, what am I trying to think of? The Common App. That one, thank you. I'm like, I know it has to do with app, but I couldn't get there. It is similar to Common App, but for pharmacy schools. So it allow you to apply to many pharmacy schools at the same time. We do not require the PCAT. And please know that if you are doing your pre-pharmacy at Purdue, we are here to help you in so many different ways. So we as advisors are always going to be making sure that you're staying on track. Um, we're really good about every single time you come in our office, we are making sure that you are hitting the points that you need to in order to be successful and in order to be a strong candidate for the PharmD program. We also offer a few courses to help with the process. So we already talked about PHSC 100, but there's also a PHSC 200. So that would have been um, Farm 200 for you, Kayla. Um, in that course, we are going to walk you through how do you apply to the PharmD program, um, doing mock interviews, walking through how to write a personal statement. So these are all things that will help you moving forward into the program. Kayla, could you tell us a little bit about your experience with Farm 200? Yeah, so basically all of the assignments that we were given in that class were to complete like aspects of the um, the FarmCast application. So personal statement, we send that in, we get feedback, this is what we can improve on. Um, your resume, what is a resume? How do I format a resume? That kind of thing. Um, we did mock interviews. You work in a smaller group, which like which is a lot more helpful. It's a lot more comfortable. I got to know my group pretty well. Um, and I mean, hey, I got into pharmacy school, so I guess I, I guess it really helped. Wonderful. Um, something worth mentioning, we also have a PHSC 201 course. This one is designed for our BSPS students. So if you are interested in that drug research, drug development side of things, we're going to give you another course to help you develop the skills that you need. Um, I'll never forget one of my students who was taking this class um, last semester comes into my office and says, you know, I wasn't really paying attention, but then they said, how do you get an internship? And my students started paying attention really close that day. So we're going to give you the information that you need and really try to help you along the way. Now you may be asking your, ah, too far. <laughs> Scrolly wheels are fun. Um, how how do I be, how, do, how am I a strong candidate? What types of things do I need to do? So these are what we call the puzzle pieces. And that's because when they all come together, they form the ideal Purdue Pharmacy candidate. So kind of working around the, the diagram here, up at the top, we have work experience. So if you have been a lifeguard, maybe you have... Um, been a babysitter. Maybe you have worked in an ice cream shop, which is oddly specific, but also very common out of my students I've learned. I also have quite a few servers. Um, any sort of work experience is going to be looking really good. Leadership and organizations. So if you get involved and you find some clubs and organizations, maybe you find ways to hold leadership roles, that's going to look good. Volunteerism and service. Excellent. We want to see you giving back to your community. Academic performance. So, of course, we're going to check your grades. It is an academic program after all. We would like to see you at about a 3.0 or above in your college courses. Um, the average incoming GPA for our PharmD classes is usually around a 3.4 or 3.5. So that's kind of the average. Career exploration is a really big one and one that you can be working on now. So we want to see that you know what pharmacy is all about. So see if you can shadow any pharmacists. If they won't let you, see if you can interview pharmacists. Ask them, what do you like about your job? What don't you like about your job? Where do you see the future of pharmacy heading? What would surprise me about your job? And the wider range of pharmacists you can get, the better. So if you can interview a nuclear pharmacist and shadow a community pharmacist and 
um, talk to an ambulatory care pharmacist. This is going to give you the wider range of knowledge and really see what types of pharmacy you might be interested in. If you can work as a pharmacy tech, that looks good too, not going to lie. And then communication and writing skills, you're going to have to be able to communicate with patients. So we're going to want to be able to see those skills as well. So I'd like to ask all three of my ambassadors, what were you doing, what have you done, or what are you doing to be a competitive candidate for the PharmD program? So I can start us off. And again, I took a bit of a different route. So I had a little bit more experience just because instead of doing the two years, I had four years. And so one of the big things was working in the hospital that really for one, that's what brought me to pharmacy to begin with. Uh, but it was also a really great experience for something I could talk about. This is, I've already had some patient care experience. These are some of the experiences that I've had. This is what I've seen, um, especially within pharmacy itself, because um, they really like to see that you've, like Amanda was saying, you, you know something about pharmacy, even if it's a different realm of pharmacy. It doesn't just have to be Walgreens, just that you have some kind of exploration you've done within pharmacy. And for me, that was the hospital. Um, and then leadership, I went to a really small school, so it was e easier to do that, that kind of thing because there's less students in general and enough clubs to get involved in. Um, but here at Purdue, there are a lot of different opportunities for leadership and a lot of different clubs um, that you can get connected with even in your pre-pharmacy years. Um, and some of those clubs even have pharmacy students in them. So you'll have a lot of chances to get mentors along the way, which I think is a really cool experience because... Uh, we definitely didn't have that in the school that I was at. Um, for volunteerism too, uh, for me, that was a really important thing. Uh, that was what I put a lot in my uh, application and being able to talk about experiences where you've served uh, in your community, helped other people. I mean, it's anyone can say, you know, a lot of pharmacy students, I would hope they would all say that they're in it to help people because that's what we want to do. We want to improve the lives of patients, but showing that you've done something that actually demonstrates that you have the kind of heart to do that goes a really long way in the application process. And as your own professional development as a student, just demonstrating that you've taken the time to go into the community and you've helped and served in some kind of capacity. For me, it was clinical, um, like a free clinic, but there's plenty of other opportunities that you can get in, involved in to volunteer in the community. Yeah, I think for me coming in and only being a freshman, um, one of the things I was more scared about is like, how am I going to get a leadership position in an organization? Like, are they really going to let next year me being a sophomore be on the board of something? And um, I was like, well, it's a big school too. Am I really going to be able to do this? And it is actually very feasible. So not only does the College of Pharmacy have so many different clubs, I'm in a pre-pharmacy club. Um, and that one is very helpful. We get to talk a lot to other pre-pharmacy students and their experience. Um, but then also other clubs like I joined the American Red Cross Club. Um, I actually applied today for a position on the exec board. So um, it's not as scary as it seems, even though it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so young. There's really a lot of opportunity. You just have to be involved and put in the work and show up to meetings. And um, they really recognize that and they will pay that back to you almost. Um, and then like Tyler said, volunteerism is a really big thing. And even on campus, I was like, well, I have some volunteer hours, but I really wanna get more. There are so many different opportunities on campus um, in the greater Lafayette area. There's a dog shelter here where you can walk dogs. There's food pantries you can volunteer at, so many good experiences. And also as you kind of um, progress through the program, as you're, especially your freshman year, there are so many resources. If you need more volunteer hours, there's always my academic counselors always emailing me like, hey, could you help out with this? Um, can you show up for this? We really need people for this. And you can record all those hours. So it's not as scary as it seems. All right. For my experience, I was a tech um, for my work. So that helped with my career exploration. But I also like was able to get in contact with like friends of friends as parents and they happened to work in a pharmacy or they worked as a pharmacist in a hospital. So I was able to get um, some shadowing hours through them. Um, volunteering, I, like, like like Aubrey said, like there's a lot of opportunities here at Purdue, specifically at Purdue. I did the 
volunteered for the oral English proficiency program, which helps um, international students who want to become TAs to work on their English so that they can start TAing classes and have their students understand them better. Um, I think the main thing that I gathered from my, when I was applying was the quality of your like puzzle pieces, I guess, having something to talk about and having like depth in what you're talking about is the most important thing. Also, um, I don't know if this is still allowed, but when I was um, applying, which was only a year ago, um, I was able to pull experience that I had in high school. I know that in your first two years, like I felt like I didn't have enough um, to fill all of my puzzle pieces when I was in college. So um, my advisor told me that it was okay to pull stuff from high school as well. So if that's something that you're worried about, like, it's okay, you can, you can have stuff from high school. Kayla, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, so we generally let students use um, any experience from the previous four years, so the four years from before you apply. So that would generally be your junior and senior years of high school, along with your first two years at Purdue. So my recommendation would be use a Google Doc or a physical notebook or an Excel spreadsheet. Keep track of everything you do. The FarmCast application can be kind of tedious in that it wants all of this information. So if you can start writing it down now, that's going to save you so much time when you actually go to apply. So for, ex for example, if you are volunteering somewhere, write down the day, the time, the amount of um, experience you're getting, who your supervisor is, what you're getting out of the experience. That is all information that will come handy, especially if you can copy and paste it later. So that would be my recommendation. Write down every little thing you do, it all looks good. And while we do say, please use everything from high school, we're gonna wanna see you continue at Purdue. So kind of how Aubrey said, you can get involved in your first year there is time, there is um, always an opportunity around waiting to help you. So a lot of people like to know the numbers. So as far as PharmD applications go, we usually receive around 400 per year. Of those 400, we will invite roughly 250 for an interview, and we accept 150 into the PharmD program each year. Usually is about 135. This year it is exactly 135 if the numbers haven't changed yet. Students will come from West Lafayette. So they did their pre-pharmacy at Purdue. Now to kind of give you another set of numbers that would get you thinking, as far as our incoming freshman class goes, we can get somewhere between 700 and 1,000 applicants and we will admit 500 of them. Of the 500 who we say, hey, come join us at Purdue, we'll have around 250 say, yep, Purdue's the right choice for me. About 200 of those will actually apply for the PharmD program. So you might be wondering, where'd the other 50 go? They could be doing the BSPS program. Maybe they changed their major. Maybe they decide Purdue's not the right fit for them, what have you. Um, so if we're only having about 200, and 200 students applying every year from Purdue, and we're inviting 250 applicants for interviews and 150 students are getting admitted with 130 of them, 135 of them coming from West Lafayette. Most of the time, um, our students stand a good chance. And if I have a student who doesn't get into the program, I'll meet with them and I'll ask them, do you know why you didn't get in the program? And most of the time, the answer is yes. Um, they might say, you know, I didn't have any pharmacy experience or my grades were lower than I really wanted them to be. So generally, if students are working hard on those puzzle pieces, then their odds are looking pretty good. Something we also have is priority admissions. So if you want to be guaranteed an interview, so you automatically get to the interview part. Um, we're looking for a GPA of 3.25 or above and no less than a C minus and a GPA of 3.0 or above in these courses. So this is listing out some of the um, required courses. This is not all of them, but these are some that we identify as critical. So if you can manage to get the 3.25 GPA, do well in these courses, 
we will guarantee you an interview, which is one step closer. Um, you will still have to do the interview process and prove that you are made to be a Purdue pharmacy student, but this gets you that one step closer. We already kind of talked about research opportunities, but I would like to emphasize that our students can't, oh, sorry, they can do research in the College of Pharmacy, but they can look into other colleges as well. I have some students in um, Health and Human Sciences doing research. I have some in chemistry, some in biology, some in biochemistry. So you can look around the university, not just in the College of Pharmacy. We also have some summer opportunities to do research and students can re reach out directly to faculty. So if you find a research project that you're interested in, you can get in touch with the person who runs that and get started right away. So the opportunities are endless and is a pretty easy process to get involved. What you might find important are the next steps. So it would be ideal if you came in what we call calculus ready. So if you bring in calculus credit, that's awesome. If not, we're looking for an SAT math score of 620, an ACT math score of 26. And if you don't have either of those, that's perfectly okay. We have the Alex placement test, which will tell you which math course we think you are prepared for. And you can take it up to five times. We're looking for a score of 75. If you take it and you get, say, I've had students get a 72, I'll have them um, look through some of the modules. They have a way to review, take it again. And then if you're above that 75, you will be able to take both calculus and chemistry, which would be ideal. Um, but if you don't meet that 75, no worries. We'll have you talk to your advisor and make a plan that will work for you. Make sure you register for All Aboard Purdue. That's going to be you getting acclimated to um, Purdue's policies, learning about the college, learning about the university. I would also recommend you register for BGR. That's the Boiler Gold Rush Orientation Program. Aubrey, you went through this recently. Can you tell us a little bit about BGR? Yeah, so basically you move in a week before um, actual classes start and you get settled in your dorm. You get to like get settled before um, everyone else comes in. And so it's mostly just freshmen on campus. And then you get put in a group. I think my group had like 15-ish students. And then you have um, what's called a BGR leader. So, or I think it's called a TL. Um, it's basically like a sophomore or a junior um, that has gone through the process before and they'll just take you around everywhere. They show you all of the buildings that they like to study in. You guys will all eat meals as a group together. There's all these different um, programs you can go to. I know one night there was like a comedian slash love doctor that we all went to. There was like a firework show. Um, so it's just a bunch of really cool things to do. My roommate, who's also in pharmacy, is actually going to be a TL next year. Um, so she really, really loved it, but it's just a way to make new friends. Um, there's two girls that were in my group that I'm still super close with. Um, and you really just get to get acclimated to campus, find out where all the dining halls are, where the gym is, all this stuff kind of before you get on campus. So before you start classes, you really feel comfortable with navigating. You won't feel lost, um, all stressed out on the first day. And it was really, really fun. And I recommend highly enough, I'm telling you. Um, some other things to do, make sure you get your AP IB dual credit submitted as soon as possible, just so that it's going to be on your record. And try to do some shadowing and volunteering. Learn more about pharmacy. Um, those would be the things that I recommend. And that reaches the end of my presentation. Um, so please, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat, unmute yourself. We are happy to stick around for a little bit. Um, if it's something that you would like to take some time to think about, I have my email up there. So mananad at purdue.edu. Please feel free to email me. Um, I'm really good at responding to emails. It's almost, almost kind of weird. Um, Kayla can speak for this as one of my advisees. I'm, I, I just respond to emails. It's what I do if I'm not in meetings. So if you would like to reach out that way, you are more than welcome to. Otherwise, we will sit here and um, answer any questions that come our way.
You're very welcome. I'm glad you could make it.